Before you watch this video, I would highly recommend you check out my video on area of shapes if you haven't already done so. I'll put a link to that video in this video's description. In this video, we're looking at compound shapes. If you take two shapes and then join them together to make a larger shape, we call this shape a compound shape. Let's add some lengths onto this shape and work out its perimeter. To find the perimeter of a shape, we simply add up all of the lengths of the sides. So if we start up here in the top left and just go around the shape, we've got five centimeters and we can add seven to this and add six then add three. Then we add 11 and finally we add 10. And if you add all of these together, you'll find the perimeter, which for this one is 42 centimeters. You may also be asked to work out the area of a compound shape. To do this, you're going to need to split it into its two original shapes. So I'm going to split it with a dotted line like this. Now we have two rectangles. We'll call this one rectangle A and this one rectangle B. Let's find the area of rectangle A first. The height of rectangle A is 10 centimeters and the width is five centimeters. So to find its area, we just multiply 10 and five, which is 50 centimeters squared. For rectangle B, the height is three and the width is six. So if we multiply three and six, we get 18 centimeters squared. To find the area of the whole compound shape then, we can just add together the areas of these two rectangles. So the area of rectangle A, which was 50, plus the area of rectangle B, which was 18. If you add 50 and 18, you get 68. So the answer for the area will be 68 centimeters squared. Now, unfortunately, exam questions on compound shapes are rarely this straightforward. Let's have a look at another one. So if we take this compound shape here, and we'll try and find its perimeter. The first thing to notice is that we actually have two sides missing. We don't know the length of this side or this side. So to find the perimeter, we're going to need to work those out first. Let's start with this side here. This side is a vertical line. To find its length, we're going to look at the other vertical lines on the shape. I can see this vertical line here is 11 centimeters, and this one here is six centimeters. If I imagine bringing this green side across like this, so that it lines up with the blue side, I can now make a comparison between these. The total length of the blue and green sides must be the same as the orange side. So I can work out the length of the green side by subtracting the blue side, six, from the orange side, 11. So 11 subtract six, which is five. So the length of the green side is five centimeters. Let's add this onto the diagram. Now let's find the length of the other missing side, this one here. This side is horizontal this time, so we'll compare it with the other horizontal sides on the shape. We have this 14 at the top and this four at the bottom. If we imagine moving the four centimeters up so that it lines up with the green side, we can then compare the lengths of these. The total length of the blue and green sides must be the same as the orange side. So we can find the length of the green one by doing the orange one 14, subtract the blue one four. 14 subtract four is 10. So the length of that green side was 10. We can put this onto the diagram as well. Now that we found the lengths of the missing sides, we can calculate the perimeter just like we did before. If we do 14 plus five plus 10 plus six plus four and plus 11. If you add all of these together, you'll get the perimeter, which will be 50 centimeters. We can also calculate the area in the same way we did before. Let's split the shape with a vertical dotted line like this. We now have two rectangles, this one here, rectangle A, and this one here, rectangle B. Let's find the area of rectangle A first. The height of rectangle A is 11, and the width is just four. So to find its area, we multiply 11 and four, which is 44 centimeters squared. For rectangle B, the height is five, and the width is 10. So we do five multiplied by 10, which is 50 centimeters squared. To find the total area, we then add these two areas together, which is 94 centimeters squared. Now you may have noticed that's not the only way we could have split the shape. It's also possible to split the shape with a horizontal dotted line like this. We now have some slightly different rectangles. So this could be rectangle A and this could be rectangle B. So we can find the area in the same sort of way. We multiply the height of rectangle A, which is six by its width, which is four. So six times four is 24. For rectangle B, the height is five and the width is 14. Five multiplied by 14 is 70. If we then add these together, 24 plus 70 gives us 94 centimeters squared, which is the same area we got as before. So it doesn't matter how you split the shape, as long as you have all the necessary information to calculate the area of the resulting rectangles. Let's have a look at another problem. 
This time we have a compound shape, but it's not two rectangles. Let's begin with the perimeter. We have all of the lengths of this shape, so we can calculate the perimeter easily. We would do 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus another 5 and plus 3. If you add all of these together, you'll get 28 centimeters. And now for the area. The area is slightly more tricky. There are two possible ways of splitting this shape. We could do a horizontal line here, which would split it into a rectangle and a trapezium, or we could do a vertical line here, which splits it into a triangle and a rectangle. This is the approach I'm going to use. So I'll label this rectangle here as A, and this triangle here as B. Let's work out the area of A first. The height of the rectangle is 7, and the width is 5. So 7 multiplied by 5 is 35. Now for the triangle, there's a bit more work to do. We don't actually know the base or the height of this triangle, so we're going to need to work both of those out. This here is the base of the triangle. It's a horizontal line, so let's have a look for some other horizontal lines. At the top here, we have 5 centimeters. And if we bring it down to the bottom, we can see that this blue line, 5 centimeters, must go with the green line, the base of the triangle, to make a total of 8 centimeters. So if we do 8 subtract 5, we find the base of the triangle is 3 centimeters. Now what about the height of the triangle? That would be this dotted line here. That line is vertical, so let's have a look at the other vertical lines on this shape. We have 3 centimeters here, and 7 centimeters here. You should be able to see that the 3 centimeters must go with our height to make a total of 7 centimeters. So 7 subtract 3 is 4, so the height of the triangle is 4. We're now ready to work out the area of that triangle. We would do 1 half, multiplied by the base of the triangle, which is 3, multiplied by the height of the triangle, which is 4. If you do 1 half times 3 times 4, you end up with 6 centimeters squared. So to find the total area of this shape, we add 35 and 6, which makes a total of 41 centimeters squared. Sometimes we're given exam questions that look like this. We're given a shape, and we're asked to work out the shaded area. To find the shaded area, the first thing we're going to do is work out the area of the whole square, as if the whole thing was actually shaded. To do this, we would multiply 14 and 14, which is 196. Now, the whole shape wasn't shaded, we need to remove the area of this rectangle. So we find the area of that rectangle by multiplying 4 and 6, which is 24, and then we subtract that from the area of the whole square. So we would do 196, subtract 24, which gives you 172. And that's the answer to this question. Finally, I want to look at one tricky exam style question. For this question, we have this compound shape, and we're told its area is 95 centimeters squared, and we're asked to work out the perimeter of the shape. So in this question, it's slightly different because we've already been told the area. If we were to find out the area of this shape, we might split it into two rectangles like this. We could say this is rectangle A, and this is rectangle B. We would then find the area of rectangle A by multiplying 10 and 8 together, which is 80, and then we would look to find the area of rectangle B, but there's a problem. We know the height is 3, but we don't know the width of this rectangle. We are told in the question though that the total area must be 95. We've already worked out the area of rectangle A is 80, so we could subtract this from the total area, so 95 subtract 80, which leaves 15. This means the area of rectangle B must be 15. So when we multiply its height, which is 3, by its width, we must get 15. So we can work out the width by reversing this process and doing 15 divided by 3 which is 5 centimeters. So the width of rectangle B must have been 5 centimeters. Now in this question, we've been asked to work out the perimeter of the shape, so we need all of the lengths. Now we've got most of them, but there are still two more to find. You should be able to spot that this horizontal 10 centimeters here, and this horizontal 5 centimeters here, would make a total length at the bottom of 15 centimeters. Also, if we look at this vertical length here of 8, and this vertical length here of 3, we can find this line here by doing 8 subtract 3, which is 5. We now have all of the lengths for this shape, so we can work out its perimeter by adding them together. If you add 8, 10, 5, 5, 3, and 15, you get a total of 46 centimeters. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not go and try the exam questions in this video's description.